Hey guys, I want to very quickly show you how to do zero downtime deployments with Amazon EC2. So let's just get started right now by bringing up the cluster, which is like a collection of EC2 instances using ECACLI. And I like to use this tool. Why? It's easier than using the web interface. Um, though you can probably do whatever I, all, all I'm doing now with the web interface. But I do find this ECS CLI program easier, even though it's riddled with bugs. I've you can have a look at the bugs that I filed. My name's Kai Hendry. Um, there's a lot of little niggly bits you have to work around. It honestly took me two weeks to figure out this command. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, you start off with the ECS CLI configure, and yeah, you get started using uh, with ECS CLI up. And I've already set up my key pair, my SSH key. And what it's doing now is it's spawning an Amazon Linux uh, ECS optimized instance. And this is running the uh, ECS uh, agent. And I can probably see it spinning up here. I can see it spinning up here. And it's also setting up this like quite intense VPC and with uh, cloud formation. So, anywho. It takes a little bit of time to get going. Uh, uh, right, come on, guys. Come on. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that was my last guy. Okay, whatever. CloudFormation is still getting set up. Um, okay, and then, so I have this cool little project called um, Count. And, um, oh, the ECS CLI. I like it because it uses the docker compose .yml. The, the website version seems to use a strange JSON syntax. Anyway, so the docker com compose YML is fairly simple. You have, um, oh, should reset that. You have uh, your docker image there and the port mapping. But the, where it gets a little complicated is the memory limit. You have to sort of define this. And you can only really tell what that memory limit is by looking at the um, resources uh, when when the instance gets up. Oh well. So um, have a look at my blog. I probably need to clean it up, but I tell you how to, like if you set up a, uh, what do you call it, a small, then you get two gigs of memory and you, you, and then you get like, probably, you get like a weird amount of memory, like 2003 and then you need to, um, put it in there. So there are a bunch of ways of setting up Docker containers, I think. There's a Docker Swarm, it's Kubernetes, it's CoreOS's um, stuff. Um, but um, I like the old, good old fashioned, since we use it at work, the good old fashioned sort of load balancer with a couple of instances. And uh, using um, the attractive thing for us, well, for me, using ECS CLI, even though it's got little issues, is that um, it's free. Like, uh, like Docker is charging $150 per Docker engine. I, I, I still don't even know what a Docker engine is. And Kubernetes and Docker Swarm, I do find th the sort of ideas that they're pushing quite complex. Um, I can see it being like, you know, Maybe if we're bigger, it would be make sense. But we're handling like we're handling like hundreds of thousands of users with a good old fashioned couple of instances behind a load balancer uh, and with auto scaling in a scenario. But hmm, I prefer to keep it simple. And ECS CLI keeps it simple, I think. Kind of. So come on, why does it take so long to set up a cloud formation? There must be a machine getting starting up now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's starting up. I think in the meantime, I can I can uh, I can uh, create a load balancer. So that's a problem with ECS CLI. It doesn't create a load balancer. It's one of the issues here somewhere, and everyone is like plus oneing it. Um, balancer. You see, look at this one. Typical plus thirty six. Um, okay, so what am I doing? I'm setting up a load balancer. 
Oh, first, I need to see what VPC it's set up. Is it this one? I, I use the tags to figure out. Yep, it's D, DB, D, DB9. DB9, it's alive. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm calling an ECS count, setting DB9. I think I can leave it at the defaults. Oh, I need to add it to the subnets. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had a script doing this because this is prone to problems. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, I find the healthy check check at, at 10 quite long, but uh, so I'll put it to the front. And index.html doesn't make sense because I don't have index.html. Um, I'm just associating the ECE2, but the, when I run the script, the idea is, is that once I connect it to the service, then if I, if I add new instances, they automatically come under the no load balancer. I'll show you in a bit. It's easier to see once it gets going. <laughs> the load balancer is alive. It's alive. Okay, so um, if, if I do a HT ping on this load balancer, uh, since there are no healthy instances, see, um, well, nothing even running on the instances, this should be like a complete fail zone. What? What, 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 what? Uh, curl minus I. What the hell? Could not resolve host. Come on, try harder. I'll get back to them. I'll get back to them. Okay, so um, it's up, it's up, it's up. So now I have this load balancer script, which associates. Okay, good. Now we have a service. Yep, yep, yep. So um, now I do um, ECS uh, CLI compose uh, compose service up, and that should get the Docker image running on the one instance. Got to be patient sometimes. Like, like sometimes it takes a while for service not known. Come on, try harder. Hmm. What's happening here, guys? Okay, we got the service. We got the load balancer here, great. We got the uh, we got the container. Cool, cool. This is looking good. This should be working actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be working. So Yeah, it's working great. So um, the load balancer, come on, come to life. Have I got this right even? Sorry. Um, I'm gonna just log into another, I think my, my DNS might be messed up. I'm just gonna log into another computer. Yep, it's working. So let me just ping this. Um, <laughs> I don't have HTTP ping. Okay, I'm. I want to ping this just to make sure. Um, make sure everything's sweet with it. Okay, so let me just show you a couple of things. Like, I could. Um, okay, I. I could just kill the whole service. And then the, the, um, let me just do that quickly. That means, and that mean, should mean that the, um, the, what is my other machine doing? Sorry, I, I should edit this. 
I'm just killing this, the, the container running on the instance. And that should make the load balancer go out of service and return like a backend is busy error message. Let's see if it does that. If I can manage to install HTTP. Yes, okay, this is what I want to see. So if we do HTTP, KS, K gives you like this crazy web interface. Screw that. Okay, so um, that's not how you do a, a zero down to down, down to deploy. Okay, deployment. Okay, let's get it running on one. So within um, what, 30 times five? Uh, a minute and a half or whatever the the um, the load balancer should be back up and running crikey this is a bit boring isn't it so it's 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 alive but the load balancer as I mentioned has like that healthy threshold that takes forever um, so 30 30 seconds, so it's two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Oh my gosh, I, I definitely need to speed this video up, don't I? Let's make it two or something. Blah, 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 blah. Let's make the interval lower too. Make it 10 seconds. Hopefully this will start working soon the important thing to look out for is the fail the fail zone basically when you're doing um, a zero downtime deployment you don't want to have any failed connections backend server is at capacity that's a bit generous yeah 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 this took me two weeks to figure out really so i hope you really appreciate the, the learnings i'm giving you and uh, don't be afraid to use that the cog and then go like 1.5 times speed to the boring parts um yeah yeah we can go ps here that shows it running this also shows stuff running. Oh, this is my last test stuff. Okay, ignore that stuff. That's boring. Um, that should be showing, yeah. Okay, come on, dude. Oh, it's not associated with the load balancer. See this bit. That's the problem. That's the problem right there. Got to run the script again. It's going to probably say, there's not independent. Okay, I need, I know how to fix this. Um, I know how to fix this. I basically go into the service, and go update, move it, take it down to zero, then delete it. Goodbye. So you need to create the service with this, with the script here. Stop draining. Okay, good. There's actually a lot going on in the script, so give it a good look. I brought it down initially just to show you this error message, but I didn't realize it would, it would remove the load balancer too. Okay, so now it should be getting up very, very damn soon. Ew. 
Ew, it's purple. Why is it purple? Strange. I think it's running an old one of mine. Tricky stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's that's why it's purple. Okay, so now we're back. The load balance is back. No more fails. No more fails. I'm just going to restart this to, so it's easier to see. So this is how you do a zero time downtime deployment. Sorry, guys. First, you need to get another instance running. So you need two instances running, each running a container. That's how you do it. If you try to do um, a zero time downtime deployment on one instance, it doesn't work. That's, yeah, so that's me freaking out. Because it took me ages to figure this out. So here we go. We're launching another EC2 instance, which takes time. This takes a bit of time. You can probably see what it's doing by going to EC2. <laughs> and we should be seeing another uh, device come up. I'm uh, sorry, another machine coming up. Come on. Come on. Yeah, here we go. Takes a bit of time. So this is an Amazon Linux ECS um, optimized, but running the ECS agent. can also see it. another very useful thing about this console is the events thing. I'm not too sure how you get that information. The, you click the service and then you see the events. You can usually see what's going wrong here or if everything's going well. Auto scaling? I'm in Singapore. I thought it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. It, there's no auto scaling in Singapore. It sucks. There's also no image service in Singapore too, so it has to fetch from Oregon. It's not so bad. There's also like metrics here, but I'm not too sure if I can do CloudWatch stuff. The important thing is the load balancing here. That is so important. Uh, okay, um, I'm clicking the service. I'm clicking, oh. It's running. It's running. It's running. I was gonna say, where is the, Where's the institute? Clusters. Oh, here it is. Now you can see them too. This one is obviously is not running the, 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 the container yet. I think. If I understand it correctly. Ah, this is why you need to go um, compose service scale two. This tells it to start running also on the, the, uh, this tells it to start running on the second instance. So, so scale size two here means start a new instance. Scale two here means start a new container. But since the way it works is that the, the, the ports can, are static, since this um, particular Docker image is, is like 8080, it has to run on a new instance. It's just the way it works, okay? You know, just the way it works with Amazon. You just have to ride with it. So, um, let's have a look at the load balancer. So, the load balancer, we should see two instances attached if the load balancer is correctly configured. 
with that earlier script I ran. Oh man, it's not it's not there yet. I think it needs to reach a stable state. So we have two 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 of these guys running now. I think they both should be purple, right? That's been around for a while. It's been around for a while. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So no failures still, no failures too. I just want to make sure that the load balancer is doing its job. Okay, it's just waiting for the second instance to come into service. Sorry, this takes a bit of time, guys. Got to be patient. Oh, yeah, both in the service. No failures, no failures. Okay, now let's do an update. Let's change a purple color to white background. Simply do this by changing the name of the of the container, uh, of the container image, and then we do an up. Okay, this should trigger it. The way you trigger it is edit the Docker Compose. It's not clever enough to, to notice that the image has been updated on the image server. That caught me out, that cost me so much time. It's only when you change the, the, the task definition, it realizes here, Old containers would be stopped and replaced with the new ones. So, let us watch the pings on the load balancer. Because I find it generally quite spikes when it's doing the switchy overy bit. Let's get the... Um, still purple. Still purple. What's it doing? It's taking some time. Hmm. It's downloading the new image. The agent and ECSCLI are doing some switcheroo. And look, we got we got a new image running here. Woo! No downtime, guys. You can see fails is, is uh, still zero. Yes, we're running the latest image. That's how to do a zero downtime uh, uh, deployment, guys, using ECS. Sorry, it's a little bit long-winded, um, but that's how you do it, guys. No failures. No requests were were lost in the process. And still doing his thing. Let's see, let's quickly see what the the uh, load balancer is saying. What is the load balancer saying? All good. All good. Yeah, that's how you do it, guys. It's gone from purple to white. Thanks, guys. I hope you appreciate that. A lot of. <laughs> trial and error went into finding out about all this little nuances so uh please give me a big thumbs up cheers bye i'm going on holiday for a few days sorry this video is a mess i had to do it in a hurry bye